Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie from Pocket of Preschool. And tonight or today, depending on when you're watching, we are going to talk all about fine motor journals, but I'm going to be sharing with you tonight a whole bunch of fine motor journal ideas for spring, like end of the year, summer, like themes that you're doing in your classroom. So that way you can take these and use these and hopefully it'll get you through all the way until the end of the year. So I want you to tell me in the comments, or you can post a photo of a fine motor journal that you have done in your classroom that has really been amazing or your students loved it. Um, maybe it's your idea. Maybe it's one from the unit. Um, tell us in the comments, or if you have never tried fine motor journals, um, tell us in that in the comments too. So before I forget at the top, or where all the po all the links are, there is a link to a blog post that tells you all about fine motor journals, kind of like the why, the what kids are learning, how to, all the things, organization. And then in my store is a link to the fine motor journals unit. Um, and this unit, so you can either put it, I bound this one. You can also put it in a binder. If you're more of a notebook kind of girl or guy or a binder person, do what works for you. Um, it has so many ideas. I think there's over like 500 fine motor journal ideas in here for you guys. And you can also tell there's a ton of printables that you um, can use too. So it's kind of like your little fine motor journal guide and it, you, it will literally last you the entire um, year. So let's go ahead and jump, jump right in. So what I'm going to real quick kind of go over what they are and what kids are learning. So fine motor journals are a place where you can keep all of your students fine motor work. So a lot of cutting, handwriting, practicing different types of lines, writing different letters, writing numbers, um, tearing, directed drawings, all of that, or like leaf rubbings, any of that, any fine motor activity that you can do. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to keep it in your fine motor journal and they're going to be doing it. You can either do it every day, three times a week, you know your class, so you pick you pick what works for you, right? So um, I recommend a spiral notebook. Um, you can also use composition notebooks, but these, you can see they don't really lay flat, so they're a little bit trickier for kiddos. Um, um, for fine motor journals, let me show you one as an example. So you put their name on the front. My class, well, everything was color-coded, so I... Um, I color coded their journals. I have their name on them. These are actually name tags in my store. I just printed them smaller. And then on the inside, I have a library pocket and I have their name card. I put it so that way it sticks up a little bit. So that way if it's closed or if it's open and they need their name card, they don't have to close their journal to get it. They can just grab it. And then they can put it right back in when they're finished before they're up. Before you're done in like cleanup time so it's really like kind of like a perfect little place and then also you want to make sure you have a fine motor journal this one's mine so I, I don't have my name on the front but I have my name in my pocket so that way I can model using my name card and then I know um, some teachers um, use ribbons so kind of like a bookmark or you can teach your students how to open it op find the next page and open it but if that's tricky, you can always use a ribbon. Basically, you have the ribbon sticking out and they pull the ribbon and it opens to the next page. So I just taped a piece of ribbon in the back. And then when they're done, like let's say we did lightning bolts, and we're finished. So they turn that page at the end of fine motor journal time, put the ribbon in and they close their notebook. So now they are ready to go for the next day. I know some teachers also use Binder clips, those work really great too. So you would just put um, a binder clip and they would it would literally open for them too. So you do what works for you in your classroom um, and your students. Some years ribbons, some years you may use binder clips, some years you may um, teach them how to do it, totally up to you. So since we're doing all fine motor things in our fine motor journals, students will be working on developing that fine motor strength so strengthening their fingers and their wrists um, and developing a really good pencil grasp or a stronger pencil grasp. Um, so they'll be working on that when they're doing fine motor journals. They'll be working on bilateral coordination, which means both the hands, both sides of the body kind of working together. So they hold their paper with one hand and cut with the other, or they hold their paper and they write with the other. 
um, they'll be working on hand-eye coordination, they will be working on um, just all kinds of things to help with their, um, basically everything that they do for fine motor journals will help them when they go um, to write, right? For writing time or for kindergarten. I actually have a list in the fine motor journal packet. I was just opening it up to making sure I didn't miss anything. So I'm gonna read the list just to make sure I didn't miss anything. So overall hand, finger, and wrist strength. They're gonna be working on pencil grasp, we're working on scissor skills, hand dominance, um, muscle memory, which muscle memory is when you write a letter, it's kind of like automatic, right? It's just like when you go to yoga, the first couple times you do a yoga pose or a new yoga pose, it's tricky. You don't know where to put your body in space, right? You're trying to figure it out, but then the next time it's a little bit easier, and then the next time it's a little bit easier, and eventually your body just kind of does it from memory, which is your muscles kind of remember what to do, where to put it, um, and the movement behind it, and that's, they do the same thing. Um, they have muscle memory when they write letters. That's why if they learn how to write a letter the incorrect way, it takes a long time to fix it because their muscle memory has developed the wrong or the wrong or the incorrect way, which I mean, that will happen because, you know, when you have a class of three, four and five year olds, um, it's inevitable that they will learn how to write a letter the incorrect way. So hopefully we can teach how to write the different stroke letter, um, different types of lines. So if they do those correctly, hopefully they'll be doing the letters correctly too. Um, so muscle memory, visual perception, bilateral integration, bilateral coordination, visual motor integration, hand-eye coordination, and then all that handwriting, those um, pre-writing skills, whether they're working on types of lines or letters. So that is Fine Winter Journals in a nutshell. And I have, um, I'll put the link to the YouTube video on how to start Fine Winter Journals and how to, um, just kind of like an in general fine motor journals um, video that I did before. I'll put those in the um, in the links um, after we're finished. Um, so you can watch those too if you want more information about that or check out the blog post. So let's jump right into some spring and summer fine motor journal activities that you can literally go do tomorrow in your classroom. So in the packet, there's a ton of ideas in the back. So it goes by season, it goes by theme, it goes by letter. So what you can do is, there is one for spring. There are six ideas for each theme or season or holiday. So you could turn to spring and you can pick one of these. Um, now there's different activities. So we have cutting, we have all the things. So I'm gonna show you them in person. So, one thing you can do is make rainbows and then make an M. So before I keep going with this, I'm gonna show you, especially just, it's always good to have a little refresher. So if we, let's say we, this was my fine motor journal activity for the day. Hold on, put it out of reach. Uh-oh, hold on. Here it is. So I have a basket and I keep all the different types of lines in it. So what I would do where is it? Oh, it's this one that's vertical. So I would find the type of line, why can't I find it? We are working on. So this one is a, it's a bump. So I would put this out. And if you have like a, um, any kind of like rainbow toy or anything in your classroom, I would have that out too because it's always really good to have a visual of what they're gonna draw. So, again, this is what the activity would be. So I would say, everybody would have their journals open to the right page and say, okay, I'm gonna do it and then you're gonna do it. So today we're gonna make rainbows and rainbows are this bump type of line. So we're gonna start with red and I'm gonna make a big bump. I'm gonna start over here. I'm gonna go up, 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 down, 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 stop. Up, 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 down, 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 stop. And up, 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 down, 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 stop. Up, 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 down, 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 stop. Up, down, up, down. Okay, you try. And then your students would grab the red um, and make this line. And then when they are finished with that, they just put their pens down. Fine motor journals are super quick. I would say probably 10 minutes max, usually is how long they take. And I'd say, okay, everybody's finished with red. Guess what, we're gonna do orange now. I'm gonna do it first, and then you do it. Ready? I'm gonna go up, down. 
So I'm gonna be really careful and I'm gonna try and not to touch the red line. So I'm gonna go up, down. Because what's, what that is doing is they're having to use their eyes, and eyes are a muscle, so they're having to use their eyes and track and kind of trace going inside without touching that line. So it's tricky, right? So you say, okay, I'm gonna do I'm gonna go each rainbow up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay, you do it. And then they would do it. And then you would say, okay, what color do we do next? Yellow. And then say, okay, I want to, now you guys do it. You, I do it. And then they would do it. And then do the same thing with the green, the blue, and the purple. And say, oh my gosh, look at these beautiful rainbows. Is there any letter in the alphabet that kind of looks like a rainbow or has this, has this bump in it? And they may say, you know, they'll start naming off letters. It's lowercase n, lowercase m. They'll say ones that don't make sense, um, that don't have that type line. And you can talk about that real quick and say why. Say, oh, that line doesn't have a bump in it. It has a zigzag or something. Um, and say, okay, so on the other side today, it does look like a lowercase n and a lowercase m, but today we're gonna work on m's. So I'm gonna make m's over here, and you can have them do it in rainbow order, you can have them not. But what you wanna do is you wanna say the movements that your fingers are doing. So I would say I'm gonna go line down, up, bump, up, bump. I'm gonna start at the top and go line down, up, bump, up, bump, or whatever words that you say or whatever words that make sense for that class that year. Sometimes I, some years I would make sound effects when I was doing like Z's, I would go zip, 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 just because it gets that point on it. Um, that works some years, some years I would go straight line, diagonal line, straight line. Do what works for your kiddos that year. And then what they would do is they would make them and then they would write M's until this whole page was full. And they can make them little, they can make them big, um, if they mess up, it's no big deal. And then what you can do is walk around. I use, um, you can do it at small group time where each, or you can do it um, whole group. Um, it's up to you. Do what works for your class. I did it. Um, so I did kind of a twist on fine motor journals when I did full day. So I did them all 18 kids at a time and we would lay on our bellies when we did them. And um, so that way I could be in the middle and I could really easily go help all 18 kiddos <laughs> at once. So one thing you can do to help kiddos is you can make it in yellow and then they can trace it. And if you have kiddos that you know that they're gonna struggle with this, you can go ahead before um, you do fine motor journals that day, make M's in yellow for some friends. It's a really easy way to differentiate. Um, if, a, if a friend needs help and says, oh, I need some yellow letters or I, I need letters to trace, and then you can walk over to them, have them trace. Um, some students like hand over hand, um, some students do not like it. So if you are going to do hand over hand with them, make sure you always ask, say, do you want me to, um, do you want me to hold your hand and we can do it to do a couple together, which is you're going to take their hand and you're going to help them do the movements. But again, I always ask some kids like to be, do not like to be touched. <laughs> um, and that's totally fine. You don't want to have a behavior problem because you are doing something that they don't like and it's their body. So if you're going to, you know, help them with your, with your hand and do hand over hand, just make sure you ask. Um, some kids, I had some kids who would love it hand over hand. Um, and some kids are like, no, I just make you do it and then I'll watch you or I, can you trace it? And then they do it um, that way. So, but, so that's a fun way to do it. And again, whatever it is that we're making, I do it and then they do it and then I do it and then they do it. And I'm going to talk through how to make it. And then I like to make a letter that connects to that movement. Now, how do I pick that letter? I pick that letter that we practice over here based on what I see them struggling with. If I see students struggling making a certain letter, maybe they're struggling making letter M, maybe they're struggling make I have a few friends making the letter N, so then that's the letter you would make on that side. So you can do rainbows and then M's. You can also do snails and that's like a letter E. So. Spirals are kind of interesting because it depends on where you start the spiral, depends on what letter you can connect it to. So if you start on the inside and go out, that's like a lowercase e. If you start on the outside and go in, that's like a g. So make sure you're starting your spiral the right way to make it connect to the letter you want it to. Um, you can always put a sticker in the top if you have some stickers. Um, say, okay, we're going to make a snail and give everybody their snail sticker. They can put it on and you can say, oh, that snail sticker has, it's like a spiral. And then 
I have it in there. I can't find it right now, but I have one in here. Um, so they can make their spiral and then they make the little head on the snail and then make the lowercase e. So snails are really fun. And also in here, it also tells you options of letters you can do. So like, um, like the snails, you can do lowercase e, but the rainbow that says like M, N, R, and H. So gives you kind of some ideas there too. And you can also do a ladybug. And again, if you're gonna do a ladybug, why not have like grab one from the block center or a stuffed animal and have this out? Because some students may have never seen a ladybug in real life, um, especially with students being home a little bit more due to COVID. Um, a lot of students don't have as much background knowledge as they did in the past because they were at home a lot. So bring those props out. And again, if you're doing a theme, you probably have a ladybug somewhere in your classroom. So grab that, bring it over and say, okay, we're going to make a ladybug. What shape is it? Is it shell? It's a circle and say, oh my gosh, how many legs does it have on the back? You can also pull out like a science poster or like printable too. That works too. Um, so ladybug cues are really hard, right? You can also do this to say it's a spider. So you make the circle and then you start on the inside of the body and you're inside of the circle and then you go out, inside, out. Because a lot of kiddos, it's really hard for them to cross that middle and go out. A lot of kids will start on the line and go out for the cue. So this is a really um, great um, way to help them make that cue so they can start it on the inside. And again, you can say these are spiders too. Same thing, ladybug spider. And then you can also do worms. So we had worms in the grass. So first thing we did was we made some worms. And again, you're gonna grab that type of line. Say, okay, we're gonna make hills and they're gonna, and you can trace it with your finger. You can also have to let them trace it, but it's a good visual. Um, and then you're going to make the, you do it and then they do it. And so you make the worm say, where do worms live? They live in the dirt or the grass. So we're going to make a whole bunch of grass and grab the green marker. And you're going to go like little line, little line, little line. Again, have that visual and then say, oh, you know what? Sometimes there's, there's dirt in the grass. So I'm going to make a whole bunch of little dots for the grass. And so what letter does that look like? It looks like a lowercase I because we have the dot in the line down. Now you could also do something that looks like the um, like a letter that's like a worm too, if you wanna do that. Now for cutting, here's some fun cutting things. So I know you're thinking, how do you have all this stuff? So in my fine motor, like little cubby in my classroom, I have a whole bunch of circles cut out or printed and then I just cut that printed, printed page out. I have circles, I have a basket of ovals, basket of squares, basket of rectangles, basket of triangles, and these are the squares. So it's if you already have these prepped, and again, maybe you only have to prep them once a quarter, or maybe you're running low in circles, so then you just need to print more of those circles. And those printable shapes are in here for you. Where are they? Probably towards the front, but that way, there they are, I found them. So there's a whole page of ovals, circles. Okay, so you just print this page and then cut it. And I have the different triangles in here for you guys too. Just print them on Astro Brights paper. And then that way, so if you're doing kites, you would just grab the box of uh, triangles, of, of squares, and then cut out squares. Anytime we're doing cutting, I always offer loop scissors. If Loop scissors are too easy for them. They usually won't pick them up. They'll grab the regular scissors. Um, most of my scissors also have a piece of tape. So I always have um, tape to the top, tape to the top of the ceiling. So that way I'm not having a mark on their thumb. So it's like a nice visual for them to know where their thumb goes and where to put to the top or the ceiling. Again, you know how they turn their wrists over so they can cut out their squares. And loop scissors, basically bounce back open. <laughs> so they bounce back open, there's a nice spring. So if your students are struggling with scissors, these are a perfect tool to help them. It's a nice um, adaptive tool to help your friends. And sometimes kiddos who are struggling with scissors, they'll start with these, but their hand gets tired really fast and that's okay. So when their hand gets tired and rather than having them stop doing the activity and not able to participate, I'll say, you know what? Your hand's tired, shake it out for a minute 
And you know what? Do you want to try the um, the loop scissors or we call them bouncy scissors? Why don't you, you do use the bouncy scissors um, because your hand is tired and that's okay. It happens, right? It's just like us when we cut out a ton of lamination. So they're so awesome. And in my Amazon storefront, I have a whole um, list on fine motor journals and these are in there if you want those. So you can do kites. You just cut them out and then they get to add, add details with the markers. You can do a raindrop. This is a tearing collage. So anytime we do tearing collages, what I do is instead of handing the kiddos this piece of paper, what I'll do beforehand during my prep time is I will tear paper and then I will give this to them because tearing is hard. It is a very tricky thing. So what you're going to do is they're going to get a piece of paper and they have to tear it. And then this way, they just have to tear little pieces, right? And if they want to tear this more, they can. And they just draw the teardrop or the raindrop and glue it on. They can draw it or you can draw it ahead of time. It's up to you. But again, if you're tearing, just put a whole bunch of paper strips that are already torn because tearing is tricky. And you can use different shades. You could also do a sun. That would be really fun too. So here is a big umbrella we did. So again, you can you can draw the umbrella before or you can have them draw it and say, we're gonna decorate our, our, our umbrella. So you can do stripes and then it's raining so it needs dots, which looks like a lowercase i. So we have the line and then the dots. You can do a different design and practice different letters. Maybe you wanna practice letter S, so have them make um, little hills all the way down. I have a vertical one, hold on. So you could have them make zigzags going vertical or down. You can have them do um, hills going down to decorate their umbrella. And then you could practice letter S or the letter Z. And then you can do, so these are kind of more like end of the year summer ideas. So we can do watermelons. So you're making your U, they color it in. And we're making letter U. This is ocean waves. So ocean waves kind of look like a what? A lowercase u because every time you go bump, you can keep going or you can go down and stop. And then we have, I forgot what this is. Hold on, let me look in my, in my book. <laughs> oh, these are like a seashell, like those spiral seashells. So you can have the seashell on the table with you and have the spiral. Oh, why can't I find it? I have it, I know I do. There it is. <laughs> have the spiral out, and again, if you start on the outs on the top, and go around and in, it's the same movement as the letter G. But if you wanna start on the inside and go out, you could practice lowercase c. And then we have a pineapple, which is really fun. So they draw the circle, and then the vertical, and the horizontal lines, and add some, some little leaves at the top, and it looks like the letter F. Um, this is great to practice too because you can say line down and then touch the line over, touch the line over. Because a lot of times kiddos, when they make that F, they go over the line, right? It kind of looks like a, like a crazy T, <laughs> right? So it's a great time to practice that. And then you can give students little stickers. So stickers, I think they can get expensive um, when you have 18, 25 kiddos, that's, it gets expensive to give them stickers. So what you can do is instead of giving them like, hold on, like a full sheet of stickers like this, cut this up so you're, maybe you only need to use two sheets for your whole class. Give them just a little, a little section of stickers so they're gonna make the grass, we're gonna do some zigzags. and you're gonna make the graphs, and then when they're done, you can give them stickers. Now, stickers are tricky. So if you have this part on, sometimes it's hard for kiddos to, to get them off like that. I put those in there already. But what you can do is peel off that background so that way it's easier for them to peel off. So if they have weak fine motor or they haven't used stickers a lot, peel off the background of your stickers Here's an example. So what you're gonna do is your, and some stickers are easier to peel off than others. And you just peel it off. Sometimes you'll get one that's kind of stuck. 
you can just put it back on and there you go. You just throw this away. <laughs> so we got some insects in the grass and then we have a sun. So I drew it and again, give them strips of paper. This is just a torn paper collage. Now, if you want to practice cutting and maybe you want to practice cutting little strips, you'll give your students so again, beforehand, oh, you know what? I think, oh, I don't have one over here. I have a big bowl of strips that are cut like this. I just, I was using it for something and I forgot to bring it over here on the table. Okay, maybe not, use a paper cutter so they don't look like this. But you can give them strips, cut strips, and they can cut. This is great for three-year-olds or students who have, um, have a hard time opening and closing those scissors, or it's just a great way to practice the scissors. If you want them to practice more, make the strips skinnier, because um, they'll have to cut more pieces to fill in the sun, or cut them thicker, and they won't have to cut as many pieces to fill in that sun. It's an easy way to differentiate. And then, oh, that's going into fall. <laughs> so those are some spring ideas. And then I have some more, so don't worry. I'm not, I'm not, I still have more ideas to show you still. So, so plants is a theme I know that a lot of us do. Right? So this one, you can see I have some more ideas tabbed for us. So you're gonna make the line down and then they're kind of making like um, not mature plants, right? They don't have the flower on them yet. So you're gonna draw the, have them draw the dirt first with the brown marker. You do it, I do it. And then um, have them draw the stems. And this is sneaking in some science and some vocabulary at the same time. They draw the stems and then say, oh, our, our plants, they don't have a flower yet, but they do need what? What grows on, what part of the plant is on the stem? A leaf. So they're gonna make a little leaf. So we're gonna go, we're gonna touch the line around and stop. Touch the line around and stop. And this looks like the letter, you can do lowercase b, or you can do lowercase d. So plant. You can also, this one's, oh, R is a little tricky. So we, I did a blueberry bush. So they draw the branches first. Again, you do it and then they do it. And then say, our blueberry bush, it needs some leaves. So draw some leaves on your blueberry bush. And then it needs blueberries. So draw the little circle blueberries. So we have a straight line. We have the curve for the top. And then we're, so when you're doing the stem for this one, you're gonna start out and touch the line because, or um, sorry, yeah, start out and touch it. Or, because when you do this, you go start at the top and go out. So it's kind of the same. It's still a diagonal line, just a little bit different. R is a tricky one to find, <laughs> um, to find, uh, um, what is it? Find motor journal <laughs> ideas, but. Now, you could also practice Ks with this. You could also practice, again, Bs and um, Ds with this. P, letter P, tons of letters. Another one are just flowers. So they draw the circle or the center of the flower and then they're gonna do petals all the way around. Now you could also, if you wanted to, give everybody a row of stickers and they could put the stickers on and then they could do the petals around the sticker. Again, do you, if you have a bunch of stickers, it's fun. And again, we're just doing, kind of mixing it up to do different things, so it just stays exciting, right? Because handwriting is never super fun, but we gotta make it as fun as you possibly can. So, you're gonna make the circle and then they go around and those bumps look like the letter M. And then this one is really fun because you can't, but it's just like, I trimmed it. So you know how they love to like snip, snip, snip? So give them some pieces of green but green <laughs> and they can then just snip the top and then it's like little grass and then you can give them some stickers or they can draw some stickers. So this is again, just a really fun cutting activity. And then we have some roots. So what I would do for this one is I would probably grab a book from <laughs> my classroom library and talk about what the roots look like and talk about how they are straight lines down and then the roots go down into the ground to find the water which is kind of like the letter Y. So we got the long line and then we start out at the top and go in and touch the line. So, and then you can also do still life drawings in your fine motor journals. 
So if you have some fake flowers, put those in the middle of the table and they can draw those. It's kind of like in the fall when you do still life drawings with pumpkins, put the pumpkin in the middle of the table and they can draw the pumpkin. You can do the same thing with fake flowers or if you have real flowers, you can do that too. And they can draw the plant or whatever you have that's spring that's alive. And then sometimes it's really fun to put out markers and crayons just so they have two different things to use to color in. So really, really fun. All right, let's do a pond. Oh, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna skip, hold on. I'm gonna skip to zoo because I wanted to show you something. So this is why. So again, still life drawings. You can also use figures. So if your kiddos are loving zoo, this is fun to do with dinosaurs too for a dinosaur theme or any, really any animals, or you could even put out a whole bunch of insects. So put out a whole bunch of, these are from the block center, put out a whole bunch of like animal figures from the block center. And again, if you're doing pond, put out pond animals. If you're doing zoo, put out zoo animals. If you're doing jungle, put out jungle animals. If you're doing insects, put out those insect animals. If you're doing camping or forests, put out those forest animals. And then what they do is they can pick an animal and they can draw it in their fine motor journal. So you can talk about how it has, what shape is the body, what um, what designs does it have, this one has stripes. So they can do still life drawings with animals from the block center. All you have to do is put them in the middle of the table. So again, it's great fine motor. A lot of the fine motor things that you're doing will also help their illustrations. If you teach kindergarten and they're doing illustrations in their books, this is a great way to kind of practice adding more details to drawings too. So this one's really fun. You can practice. So this is animal teeth. So they can draw the mouth and then they have to draw the very sharp teeth, which is like a letter V. And then this one, it's the trunk of the elephant. You could do J, you could do lowercase J. You could also do Q and have a little, little belly on it. You can also, and this one's good for anything. So I have in my stack, in my stack of cutting, I showed you guys how I have my shapes pre-cut or like ready to go at all times. So those are in blue baskets. And then I also have different lines cut. So these are just like a, a skinnier line, like probably, that's probably like uh, three fourths of an inch. And then I have these that are a little bit thicker. And then I have, and this one is kind of all kinds of different things. So I have like a straight line. We have some, these are all different ones. And again, all of this is in your fine motor journal printable unit. Okay, I have those ready. And then these I did, these are just some cut up wrapping paper. So this was, you can tell was probably around Christmas. This was for like a birthday party theme. I just have, if I have like scrap paper, this was like, um, I, this was for um, St. Patrick's Day. And then here, here it is, I do have them in here. These are all my like different colored strips that I just kind of keep in here. So what you can do, you can either do, put all these back really quick. And again, this is so, if I have them prepped, I just kind of put them in there and we're ready to go. So what you can do with any theme, this one I just happen to have some zoo stickers. So what you do is you give them, I have bugs on hand. So give them some bugs or whatever sticker you have. And before they cut, they are gonna put the stickers on the paper. So we got some great fine motor work, hand-eye coordination, and it just makes cutting <laughs> these lines a little bit more fun. So they're gonna open up their scissors, again, tape to the top, and they're gonna cut, snip, snip, and again, have the bounce, bouncy scissors or loop scissors out for them too. And then they can glue this in their journal. So again, this is one I did for the zoo theme because typically you always have tons of animals for a zoo theme. You can also do them on the longer lines. Again, you can put both, um, put, have some kiddos use the longer lines at one table. Some kiddos use the shorter lines at another table depending on their level um, and how much they can cut. So that's a fun little cutting one just with some stickers. You can also make a map. So give a kid all the, um, give the kiddos some 
little um, zoo stickers, and then talk about how each animal has a section at the zoo. So this is the gorilla habitat, this is the bear habitat, and they can draw a circle around that habitat or a square, and then they can make the path for people to walk. So it's kind of like a really fun map. And if you don't have stickers, you can also Google image, um, like look up some Google images, print those out and grab those for that too. And then a number train. So, you know, I have my cutting baskets. I also have, and this is in the fine motor journals. I keep a tub of, my tub is running low, <laughs> um, uppercase letters. So it has like all the uppercase letters. And then this one's lowercase letters. And then this one is numbers. So you can either do a number train or a letter train. And depending on the level of your kiddos, they may be able to put them in order. They may be putting them randomly on. Um, and again, you could do a number train and you could also do numbers just one to 10. You could do um, uppercase letters, you could do lowercase letters. And again, they could either be doing it randomly or they could be doing it in order. Um, again, depending on their level. Or you can differentiate if you have some pre-K friends that are ready to do this in order. Say, okay, I want you guys to do your number train in order. Um, just quietly tell them that. And then the other friends will be making their number train with random letters. And then you have the friends who are ready to be challenged more making the number train in order. So those are some fun for a zoo theme. Okay. So I told you I had some pond ideas for you too. And again, all of these ideas are in the fine motor journal, but I just love sharing them with you guys too. So this one is... It's a cricket jumping. Okay, so I had some cricket stickers. Again, if you don't have the sticker, you can just tell them that's what you're doing or you can Google image it and have them glue that up top. So you know how crickets jump. So we're gonna jump like a cricket. We're gonna go bump. Like again, I love to make noises. Boing, boing, boing. Or um, up, down, up, down, depending on what you like to say. And again, have, have your visual out. You do it, they do it. And you can also trace these in yellow too in student journals if you know they're gonna need that support at the beginning, have your friends that you know that need that, have that already in their journal ready to go for them. If a kid needs help, say, oh, um, if you see them struggling or you know their face when they're having a hard time, you can see it in their face, right? Say, oh, do you want me to make one in yellow and you can trace it? They can say yes or no. You can ask them to do hand over hand. They can say yes or no. Um, yeah. Really fun. And then this looks like a R, it looks like an M, a lowercase M, it looks like a lowercase N. So pick the letter to do on the other side that your students need extra practice with. This one's really fun. It's a fish hook. So they draw the water and then we're gonna go down and hook, down and hook because we need a hook for our Q or if you do P and then I have a little worm on it. So I just did bump, 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 bump. So. P has a bump with a fish hook and then we have a little worm on it. And sometimes these little fun, little tricks, little fun ways to make the letters, this may be the time they remember it, right? Students have to practice and practice and practice before it sticks in their brain or it sticks as a skill. So doing these fun little stories, it just makes handwriting so much more fun than if you pull out a worksheet, we're gonna practice writing Q today. That's not as fun as this. You can also do um, some ocean waves and draw the little fish and then little out, out, out. It's kind of like a K, goes out. And then we have some dragonflies. We have a line down, we have a big wing and a big wing, a big wing and a big wing, and looks like a P. So there's that. Uh oh, oh this one's stuck there. So you can also do directed drawings in, this one fell out, so I had to glue it to the back. Um, I would typically do it on this page. So the directed drawings you can also do in your fine motor journals. And actually this frog one is a freebie on my website if you wanna try it. I'll put the link um, where the links are <laughs> for this one for you guys. Um, it's really fun. Basically it's kind of a you do it, they do it, you do it, they do it. And once they get the hang of it, they can follow the directions. Let me show you what a directed drawing would look like. Oh, I have the frog one over here too, perfect. So this is my directed drawing unit, but if you wanna try one, the um, 
frog one is free on my website. So basically you get this little poster. It also comes full, like a full page too, but it does all of the steps on how to draw the object just slowly, slowly, step by step. Here's, you can also do them as a standalone art project, but you can also do them in, oops, my weather ones fell out, in your fine motor journals. When I do them in fine motor journals, I typically have them do the outline and the marker, and then we color in with crayon. So that way, if they are crazy colorers, <laughs> they can still see their beautiful, um, beautiful object that they drew. So let me show you, I brought these over here for you guys. So we have, this is the spring set of fine water journals. This is in my store. So it's rainbow, leprechaun, bunny, kite, flowers, butterfly, frog, and earth. So we have the frog. And again, you can do these in fine water journals or standalone art projects. We have flowers. And again, they're super, it's really simple. I tried to make them as simple as possible. We have a kite. We have an earth for earth thing. Oh my gosh, the leprechauns. I saw everyone's leprechauns in the Facebook group and they turned out so cute. And you have a bunny and it doesn't have to be Easter. You can do bunny for spring. And then of course you have to have a rainbow for the spring, right? And then here's the butterfly. And then I just finished, um, we just finished doing the photographs for the summer directed drawing. So these will be added to the bundle on Friday or Friday or Monday, I believe. Um, so it's one is a watermelon. And then we have a shark. And then, oh my gosh, I think this one might be my favorite. We have a little crab. And then a turtle. And then we have baseball. And I'm from St. Louis, so we love the Cardinals. <laughs> but baseball is a great summer sport. And then we have, oops, sorry. We have a bumblebee. And then we have a flag. And last but not least, we have the ice cream cone. And again, you guys look, it's super, super simple um, directions. And then you can always do these. I also have a set that are book buddy directed drawings, you know, chicka chicka boom boom, llama llama, um, color monster, um, hungry caterpillar. Um, these are great to read anytime during the year. And there's, I also have a set of construction. And then there's also fall and winter. And then there will be a theme set also added to that bundle. But, so you can do all those fine motor journals in, or directed drawings in your fine motor journals. Back to pond. <laughs> so you can also do fish. So how we did this is I put out the circles and the triangles. So they will cut a circle and a triangle. They can match, they cannot match. And then they cut them out and glue them in. And then it's always fun to put out markers when you're doing all the cutting because they can add details to the fish um, or add water. It's also really good to put out these markers, especially if you, if you have kiddos who are having a hard time cutting. It gives their hand a break from cutting to add details with the markers. So it'll, so it'll kind of give their hand a break and then they'll be able to cut again. Um, so having markers out works for two purposes. And then, yep. I think that's a different theme. And then let's do ocean. So here are some ideas for an ocean theme. So one thing I really like to do is to give kids stickers. And I know there's always like ocean stickers at like the dollar store and places. Give them stickers and then they can make a scene for that. It's always, um, dinosaur is really fun. To, a dinosaur theme is really fun to do that with too. Um, or a, even like the zoo animals, you can give them two like safari animals and they can draw like a safari. But for this one, you can tell they can draw the beach and the ocean and add um, all of the details. And they can also draw more friends or more animals in it. So give them some stickers and they can make a little ocean scene. They can also practice cutting circles. 
So for this one, I would say find the green circles out of my circle basket and they would cut the green circle to make a sea turtle and say when you're done cutting, add the, make um, horizontal and vertical lines for the shell and don't forget the head, the um, feet or the, the flippers and the tail. So, so fun. these are the, just the cutest. You can also do turtles for like summer or camping. And then we have frogs. Any animal that jumps, you can make that, um, the bump with it, the bump line. So they can do them um, on, this, on the side and then they can go over. Again, if you don't have a whole bunch of frog stickers, that's okay. Um, just have put a dot there or they can just pretend that their marker is the frog and go jump, jump, or bump, 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 and go all the way over. So when um, somebody asks a question, do I have like a master copy? So these I have because I, in the unit that I gave you guys, it has every journal. It has a photograph of it. So that's why I have kind of a master copy. But when I was, when I do them with my class, I have my fine motor journal and you can see I start the activity. I may not finish it, um, but this is the one I journal in. So I have my fine motor journal that I use with my class. And the only reason why I have like these are because um, I, I made them for you guys for the unit. <laughs> so, and then let's do weather. So, um, so I love using um, any photographs from like all my science units have photographs in them. So those are great to pull off your pull out of your science center and use for fine motor journals. So for this one, it's raining. So you can and again you can also use like a book or put the picture up on the smart board. So you can say in the rain, see how the you know there's a cloud in the sky and the rain is like little lines and sometimes dots coming down. So. First, everybody make their cloud, bump, 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 and they make their cloud. And then say, okay, we're gonna make the long lines for the rain. Okay, so you make your long lines, and then you do it, they do it. And then you can say, you know, sometimes it's like little dots, dot, 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 dot. And then it looks like the letter I. And, but again, you can make it fit. You can say these are lowercase l's, um, whatever you need to make this letter B to match that. Um, again, do it with one that your kids um, are struggling with. Here is a storm. So we have a picture of lightning. You know, we have the cloud at the top and then say it's like, like zigzags going down. So zip, zap, zip, 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 zip. And again, so also this zigzag is a different motor pattern than this zigzag. Because this one, you're going down and you're moving your wrist this way. This zigzag you're going across, so they're going up, kind of like a, up more of an up and down movement. So don't forget in your fine motor journals to practice the vertical as well as the horizontal um, on the different types of lines. So we got stormy and it looks like the letter Z. And then we did a snowflake, so they drew their giant snowflake and then they do the little lines on the, uh, going across. So you take the long line and the long line, line across to make the H. And again, you do it, they do it. What letter does it look like? Oh, it kind of looks like an H because that's horizontal and vertical lines. And then you do it, they do it. This one is a cloudy day. So you make the sun in the middle with a whole bunch of bumpy clouds. So clouds actually do the vertical and the horizontal bump at the same time. So you can say we're gonna make a line down and make one bump. And are the letters always gonna be perfect with the fine motor journal? No. But as long as you have some, again, we're just practicing that bump because there is a bump in that N or you could also do a U in this because it's, the, again, the, the, um, the bottom part of the cloud has the bump going, um, it's the other way. <laughs> and so again, practice the letter that fits. And again, in your, in the, like this one for Halloween, it has, um, you can do ghosts and then you can do letter O, N, M, R, and H. And then also, I wanted to show you guys this in the front. 
So like, let's say you think up like, and like, I want to do this for fine motor journals and it's something you thought up and it's not in there. I made this chart. It is all the different letters and it goes from um, easiest to hardest. And it has like, this is horizontal and vertical. These are just diagonal. Um, these are circular. These are curved. Those are curved the other way. And then we have to combine curved letters. Sorry, I was trying to read it. <laughs> but it breaks all the letters down from easiest to hardest and what type of lines it makes. And it kind of builds. So again, easiest to hardest in each little column. So this is in there too. Okay, in there to help you guys. And then you can, here is a cutting collage. So they draw and then they cut. And that's where my basket of cut lines comes in handy. Sorry, this is what it was. Typically those are in there. I'm like, why is this all together? And then I would just have these out. And these, you guys, a lot of these are from when I cut and laminate. Keep those little pieces of scraps that you're gonna throw away. It's okay if they're not all exactly the same size across. It's fine, they will not know. So keep all those scraps. Like you can tell some of them are shorter than others. Again, I keep scraps. If you're already cut or cutting um, something out and you have little scraps like this, put them in the basket and you can use them for your fine motor journals because now you don't have to cut it. So you just put the basket out and say, hey, they can, you draw it together and then say, okay, I want you to um, trace each line with strips and then they can do it. So that'll save you time and energy too and resources, right? Then you're not buying fresh paper to cut. All right, and this one is typically a letter hunt. Um, so you can do letter hunts a couple different ways. Um, letter hunts are great also, to, is a, um, it's also a great like mini assessment. Cause if you do, not a letter hunt or letter, yeah, I'll tell you what it is in a minute. So it's like a pre, it's kind of like a great, it's a great little assessment because they're picking the letter and drawing it. So after they do this, what you can do is you can say, oh, I want you guys to keep your journals open and then collect them just with it all open. And you can really quick um, during your planning time or at the end of the beginning of the day, obviously before they use them again, really quick go through and say, oh, this, this friend is really struggling with this letter and make a little note on a post-it note. We need to work on R's, M's, Q's, P's, and L's. Super, super simple. And again, you're doing it anyways. But take, if you're doing a hunt of any kind, I'm gonna give you some ideas in a minute. Look at those and use this to guide what letters you need to make on other fine motor journal lessons. So hunts are really fun, but they're, I'm gonna show you how to make them not a lot of prep. So let's say you're doing a pond thing or an ocean thing. I love using tissue paper, because it's fun and it's easy. You can also use foam or felt. So put two pieces of of tissue paper in the middle. And then what you're gonna do, whatever letter manipulative you have, these are the letter beads. You guys know I love these. We don't really use them for beads. We just use them as letters. Sprinkle them in, okay? Oh, you can't see it. So you're gonna sprinkle the letters in. And then add some ducks, add some frogs. You probably already have these out for a math game. Grab them really quick, put them in, and now look. So what they're gonna do is you, they have a blank page, they're gonna pick a letter, and they're gonna write it in their journal. And what are you gonna do? You're gonna model it first. Open your journal to a new page. They find a new page. <laughs> and say, okay, here's what we're gonna do for this activity. We have a pond of letters, and we're gonna pick a letter, and we're gonna write it in our journal. So I, G, G and you're gonna write it in your journal and put it back for your next one. I'm gonna pick another one, D, D. So I want you, when you pick it, I want you to try and say the letter sound and the name of the letter, okay? These letter beads also come in lowercase too, if you wanna do lowercase, okay? So again, we're gonna be talking about letters. They get to pick. This took hardly any time to, to prep. And you can, at, when the activity is over, say, okay, can you guys help me pick up all the letters? Have them help me pick up the letters. Put them in the basket, and then it's much easier than you doing it by yourself. Because 10 little hands helping you is better and easier than that. Now, let's say you're doing bugs. You can tell I use this for something. 
It's fine. I don't know. Use it again. What can this be? It can be a jungle. It can be like a bug hunt. Again, take the letter, put them in there. You can put a whole bunch of little bugs in there. You could put flower, like fake um, flowers from the Dollar Tree in there if you're doing, um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. What are some other summer themes? You could do ocean with blue, put some ocean animals in it, do um, some yellow and green together, and then it's a safari. We got all of our safari animals in it. Okay, the giraffe is sleeping. <laughs> okay. You can do the little figures too. You can also put counters in this too. <laughs> okay. And again, just use the theme you have. How can I make a letter hunt fun and engaging for those kiddos? Okay. And they can do it. You can also do fishing for letters. Um, the fishing poles make me nervous. So I usually give everybody a magnet wand as their fishing pole. Um, that's always fun too. And you can put magnet letters on the tissue paper and then they can use the magnet wand and get them out that way. Now, if you want to work on beginning sounds, I have these beginning sound magnets from Amazon. Put your sound magnets out. Okay. We're going to pretend this is blue or here. It's our, it's, it's our bugs again. Oh, that's wet. I don't know why that's wet. Oh, because I had this in a sensory table and apparently it wasn't dry away. So put your bugs in it or make it with blue and put your ducks in it. And then now you have a hunt for sounds. So they pick the, le the, the object, fish, F. I'm going to write it down. And right, I'm going to write the uppercase. I'm going to write the lowercase. You give them the directions that you want them to do, and they can make it. This is also, they also make, um, these are like the beginning sound magnets. They also make CBC magnets. So you can go on a bug hunt for CBC magnets. So if you wanna, again, for my kinder teachers who want to make it harder um, or more challenging, practice all those different skills, you can do that. And then another fun thing you can do is, have everybody have a blank page. So I know we all love the dollar store, right? Love it. They have all the fun eggs, okay? These are some, like, I think these is like a cow. So it's like, I guess this is like barn and one barn animal and the rest are zoo animals. But what you can do, so just like everybody, and I love using trays with these so you can just put these trays out in the middle of the table or again tissue paper you can do some blue and you can put out some brown tissue paper for like the ocean and the sand and then what you're gonna do is you can hide these little letter beads in there or you can hide magnet letters in there you're gonna put one in each a okay so each one would have one and again you can do uppercase or lowercase or you can put the uppercase and lowercase inside too so they open the letter and then they write it down in their journals. Q, they write down. These are little golf pencils. I love using those too. But the trick is when you're doing an egg activity, have them rehide it for the next friend. Otherwise, your activity will be over very fast. So you can do shells for like a beach. I love doing carrots for farm for um, like a healthy, like nutrition theme. These are also great if you're growing plants. So like a plant theme. Um, so carrot Easter too. <laughs> um, these carrots are great for a ton of different themes. And then you have the zoo ones you can do for zoo. But I just wanted to say also that don't forget about all these eggs that you have in your classroom. If you have pumpkins, I know a lot of people have apples and pumpkins and um, hearts for Valentine's Day, put letters in them. And then use that for your fine motor journals because this, hiding letters in shells and having them write it is a ton more fun than doing a handwriting cheat. You will have less behaviors, more engagement. They will be talking about the letters. They'll be excited opening them. And when they're excited and happy and engaged, that skill is more likely to stick, right? Because they're happy and engaged and they're learning through play-ish. This isn't, isn't quite play, but it's as close as you're gonna get for handwriting, right? So, so, so much fun. So I hope you guys had so much fun with all of these summer um, fun, 
like spring and summer um, fine motor ideas again there's a blog post you can um, check out if you want to know all the details about fine motors what students are learning how to do them organization all the things there's a blog post for that also i have a video on how to start using fine motor journals in your classroom and you can start using fine motor journals in your classroom anytime you can start them at the beginning of the year, like the second, third week of school. You can start them in November. You can start them after Christmas break. You can start them now. It does not, you don't, don't wait until the beginning of, beginning of the year to start fine motor journals. They are so much fun. They're so beneficial. You will see so much growth. And now, instead of having 70 million papers to send home, Colton gets this journal with everything inside. And it's in one place and you can show this to your admin what are you doing for fine motor work this is what i'm doing you want you want to see student growth let's let me show you this these are great for parent teacher conferences too so all the things or if you're not seeing growth this is a great way to to bring that up with parents okay here's what he was doing at the beginning of the year here's what he's doing now we're not seeing any growth or whoa your your little friend is blowing everything out of the water look how much he's grown so it could be either or Right? Or your, your child is doing amazing. They're growing exactly how they need to. Um, so yeah, so you can show them all the things. And again, it's like a little mini portfolio. You don't have to put anything in a binder because it's already in here. You just send it home and you're done. There's no filing, nothing. The best mini portfolio ever. And it's all their fine motor work. Oh, I did want to say, I know a lot of us do leaf rubbings in the fall with like the yellow leaves. You can also do leaf rubbings with the green leaves in your journals too. So do leaf rubbings in here too. They're really, really fun. So I hope you guys have a ton of ideas now to literally go to school tomorrow or the next day and put them in your lesson plans because I want you guys to have fun and be happy and spend less time planning. So hopefully I gave you guys a ton of ideas that you can use. Remember, if you use any of these ideas in your classroom, be sure to tag me um, on social and I would love to share um, all of that out. So you guys have an amazing day or night, depending on when you're watching, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye.